Hello everyone, this is MJ and you are at my channel called Reading This Life. In this episode, we are going to talk about Kobo versus Kindle, round three. Let's do an update. And as always, before we get started, remember to like this video, comment down below, let me know. Are you a fan of Kindle? Do you love your Kindle? Are you a fan of Kobo? Is Kobo your go-to e-reader? Let me know in the comment section down below. I would be really interested to find out. And if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, please consider subscribing. Okay, so if you saw my previous videos, you know that on Prime Day, this Kobo girl got herself a Kindle. And I have been using it. I have a cover for it. Um, I have not charged it since the day I received it. And I'm going to give you an update on that. And we are at, let me just power it on. There's still a lot of battery life left. Now, Prime Day was July 13th. Is that right? And I've read about two and a half books on this. Okay, so as of right now, we are at 29%. That is reading with two books, browsing Kindle Unlimited, um, and just having it hang around the house. So 20, it's at 28% now. So that's really good. That's really good for battery life. Okay. My reading experience with the Kindle. Um, I actually read my first Richard Lehman book. I'll put a card up here if you want to look at that video. Uh, I didn't want to carry this around with me all the time. So I took a chance and it was only after I learned that this is the first book in a series that I wanted to see if it might be on Kindle Unlimited. It was on Kindle Unlimited, so I downloaded it. Not only is the first book, The Seller, on Kindle Unlimited, this is in the Beast House series, if for any um, horror fans out there. This is um, 19, uh, 1980 horror. Um, I gave it four out of five stars and five out of five trash cans for Garbagist. So, uh, Kindle Unlimited. Um, had that book on there. So I was able to download it and carry around my Kindle to read, um, you know, at lunch, um, during work, on breaks, um, early in the morning, late at night, whatever. And then they also have the second book in the series on Kindle Unlimited, which is going to be really useful because now I want to know what happens next. So that is two points for Kindle. One thing that I did not like about the Kindle, and it may have to do with the cover, but for reading in bed, it's clunky. This cover is clunky. Now, grant you, um, I got just got one off of Amazon. Teal is my favorite color, um, if you don't know already. But yeah, teal is my favorite color. And uh, so I wanted to get something teal. And this one looked good because it had the, It had the little flip cover where you can prop it up like this, you can prop it up like this, you can prop it up like this, which is perfect for reading at your desk, um, reading on a flat surface, uh, things like that. But to read with the cover on, you simply flip it upside down, but now you have all this to grip, right? Not the most, not the best, not the best, handling. It's not ergonomic. It's very clunky. And I will tell you, there were a few times where I started falling asleep and the Kindle hit me one time. It hit me in the face. The Kindle hit me in the face. And I said, I need to get a better cover for this because it was not pleasant. Um, I was sleeping and it scared me and you know how that goes. So just the clunkiness of this cover gets a thumbs down. Now I don't want to read it without the cover because it doesn't the kindle does not have the ergonomics that the kobo has okay the kobo has this little lip here that we talked about before if you could see that see how it lifts up a little bit right here it's great for gripping the cover on the kobo is way thinner if you could see that 
Okay, so I don't know if you can tell from this perspective, but see that? Okay. Huge difference when you're trying to read in bed before you're going to sleep. Huge difference. Okay. So I'm going to search for another Kindle cover that is um, comparable to the Kobo cover. The Kobo origami cover is the cat's pajamas. The cat's pajamas. It's thin. You can prop it a number of ways to read. You can prop it like this. You can just prop it up like this. Okay, there's a number of different configurations that, that you can do. You can have it like this. You can do it with the top up. It's very, um, very ergonomic and very uh, easy to make those adjustments, to flip it around, to do whatever you need to do. And when it lays flat, it lays flat and it goes to sleep. And you can see how the beveled, how the edge here is beveled up as well. Okay. For reading, I'm telling you, with the buttons, it's just a better device, I think. I really, really do. I'm not giving my final judgment yet, but I think the Kobo ergonomic design is much, much better for a reader than the Kindle Paperwhite. I said it, but it's not my final say, okay? Um, so I am going to find a cover that is more like this and put it to the test and see if I have a different result. Now, regarding the Kindle use, um, oh, let me back up. The last Kobo versus Kindle or Kindle versus Kobo video that I did, I talked about libraries and I jinxed myself because on, on July, 31st, July 31st, I went to renew my membership at the Brooklyn Public Library, which is a fantastic library. Their collection is out of this world. They're, they have things in their collection that the um, state library that I belong to, the Philadelphia Free Library, could not even touch, okay? They had a lot of obscure collections. They had a lot of different authors. They had just so much, their catalog is just so much more varied and eclectic and I loved it. Well, I sent them an email with all of my information, ready to pay my $50 to get that uh, subscription renewed. They emailed me back and said that on August 1st, they are discontinuing the out of state card member program because they want to leave all of their resources to Brooklynites. Okay. It broke my heart in pieces. I was so sad. I still am traumatized from it because I still have my Brooklyn library loaded on my overdrive that I can access through my Kobo, through my Kobo, and it won't work. It won't do anything. So I'm just going to keep it there in case they decide to renew the program. I would pay $100 a year to join this library again because the money goes straight back into the, into the library and I get so many books from them and it was just amazing. So that's an update. If anyone has any other libraries that are um, free or um, have to pay a small fee for out of state memberships, please leave me a comment in the comment section down below because I would love to sign up for another library as long as they had a different and unique collection. Brooklyn, nothing can hold a candle to Brooklyn in my opinion. It was the bomb. Okay, rant done. All right, so I don't know if because I told you that that happened. I don't know. I'm not sure. So I don't know if that's because I told you that that happened. I'm not sure. But I jinxed myself. Okay, so that was one thing. The second thing that I was able to do, and I don't know if I covered it in my last video or not, but I can send books on Libby to my Kindle which is really nice. That is a fantastic feature. Um, so I go through my phone and I um, download my books that I have requested from uh, the library. And there's an option where I can download it and read it on Libby or I can shoot it over to Kindle. 
And when I shoot it over to Kindle, it matches up with the email address. There's a button that pops up and it'll say get book. And then I can have my library book on here, which is amazing. That worked out, that worked out twice so far. Um, fantastic feature, gave me a little more push with um, the Kindle, liking the device a little more with the options that it has. Now, with the Kobo, we went through this before, um, Overdrive is on here, you can search for library books through the device and download them through the device, which is fantastic. Um, it may be a little slower than if you were on your phone, um, but it, you get the same result, library books load up. It's fantastic. Also, there was a viewer that gave me a tip about the power setting on the Kobo. Um, I guess I have it powered off and I need to keep it in sleep. And if I keep it in sleep, then it will uh, wake up a lot faster than if it's powered off. So that was the one thing, the one negative that I gave the Kobo in my first video. So I'm going to rectify that and um, we'll see how I make out with that. So for right now, as it stands, um, also Kindle Unlimited, I have four months for free as of July 13th. So this will go into November 13th. I'm enjoying the Kindle Unlimited, I'm not gonna lie. Um, there are a lot of great books on there. There are a lot of great options. I was able to save quite a few in my lists um, that I would be able to get to later. So I'm very pleased with the selection that's being offered from Kindle Unlimited. Um, yeah, really, really happy with that. So that is a plus. It would be more of a plus if it was free, but um, I don't know what the regular, what is the regular price for Kindle Unlimited? Is it $9 a month? I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, but I'm very, very pleased with um, Kindle Unlimited so far, which is great. Okay, so besides the Kindle hitting me in the face when I'm trying to sleep at night, um, I like it. I like it. So this month coming up, I'm going to get a new cover for it. I'm still going to be testing the waters. Um, battery life on the Kobo, I charge them at the same time. Um, this is powered off, so I'm going to power it up. This is about the same. Scratch that. I did charge this once because I used it. So I actually used my Kobo more than I used my Kindle. Um, so I did have to charge it. So I'm not even going to talk about the charge. But the charge on the Kobo is still quite impressive. Um, not as impressive on the Kindle, but I only, I read two books with it and then it was kind of stagnant. It was sitting, I would browse a little bit and then it would sit. Um, so I'm not using it every day and it still has 29%, which is kind of amazing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the Kobo has 18%, it has 18% compared to 29 and I've used the Kobo more. So that's still pretty comparable. That's really comparable. Okay. Battery life rocks on both devices. Um, so let's just summarize. Okay. Battery life is great on both devices. Ergonomically, the Kobo still wins in that area for me with the beveled edge for your thumb grip. Also the buttons to scroll up and down. Um, you can also touch the screen to move pages. I do like a button feature, not going to lie. Also the charge for the Kobo is on the side of the device, not on the bottom. Um, it is on the side and it is convenient and easy and does not get in the way. You cannot see it. Um, I also like on the Kobo, uh, the line of demarcation with the frame. This is plastic that goes all the way around. Um, so you have a little bit of texture. You have a little bit of um, difference between the screen and the frame. With the Kindle, it is flat all the way around. It is just uh, basically touch screen and then the flat um, plastic glass, whatever it is, I guess it's plastic. Um, and it goes all the way around. So this case I liked because it gives you that frame to kind of hold on to, to grip. Um, but it's not the same experience because of 
this flap that folds over, okay? It's a little more thicker, it's a little, it's a little heftier to carry around. So I'm going to try to rectify that by picking up a new case this month and I will check in with you next month to let you know how it's going. So if anybody has a recommendation for a great Kindle case that is ergonomic and sleek, leave me a comment in the comment section down below because I definitely will check that out, okay? So I hope that you are enjoying whatever e-reader device that you have. Um, the other thing with the Kobo, just to remind you, is that on the Kindle, the power on off is on the bottom of the device, along with the charging port, okay? Which is kind of odd, but I guess they did not want to ruin anything on the side or whatever. I think that's very clunky, in my opinion. Um, I have touched it in the past where I shut the device off. Uh, on the Kobo, your power button is on the back. And this is, the, this is a case made by Kobo, so they cut out for the power button and your charger is on the side of the device up top. Okay, so there's no way that you're really going to touch it unless you really push into it. Um, it's not going to restart, it's not gonna do anything like that. So th that's a plus with uh, the Kobo as well, is where the charging port and the on off button is located. Okay, much better than the Kindle. And that's just my opinion. Okay, so that's where we are. Right now, I still am enjoying both devices, um, but the lead for me is Kobo right now. So this is gonna be, um, I'm not sure where we're at. So this will be, I'm not sure who's in, where we are, what points. I kind of have to look that up again. So for right now, overall, this is the third video in this series. Kobo is in the lead right now. Okay, if we can find a better case and um, we'll see, we'll see about the Kindle. It's good. It's really good. My heart is with the Kobo. Ergonomic baby. That's where it's at. All right. So I said my piece. I hope you are all doing um, well. I hope you are all taking care of yourself so you can take care of others. Start shopping for those deals if there's any out there. Um, and let me know if you have a better recommendation for a case for your Kindle. All right, until my next video, everyone, goodbye for now.